Okay, so thanks again, everybody, for your patience. There was all sorts of people that joined, uh, and then I lost them because I couldn't get the uh, audio to work. But thank you for all coming back. And uh, this is officially, I guess, my second blab because the first one went terrible. So today's topic um, is five ways to make six figures as a physical therapist. And I was actually writing this one out to be a blog at first, and it came to a point where I was like, you know what, I just want to talk about this. It's a lot easier just to, you know, look into the camera and see you guys, you know, like ice the screen or something. Uh, and I was just thinking about it and, you know, six figures for a very, very long time was the I made it number. You know, if you can make six figures, then you, you can, you know, you're pretty much set for life if so long as you're not financially irresponsible or have some type of, um, you know, terrible life occurrence. and as I was writing this, you know, I wrote down the, the, the five different ways to do it. And it, it, it came to me that uh, there's a cultural challenge there uh, for the physical therapist, because if you take a look at all the people that are you know, esteemed to make six figures, kind of you just assume that they do, you know, physicians, uh, attorneys and accountants, right? Like they all make a lot of money, but it's not because they're working nine to five jobs. You know, surgeons, physicians work pretty long hours, same with attorneys and definitely with accountants. And I think that's the first step. And it's like the pre-step to making six figures as a physical therapist is if you consider your your choice of, of career and profession as a nine to five occurrence, uh, you're not going to make six figures. I can just guarantee you that, you know, being a physical therapist until it's treated with the same amount of internal and external dedication, the same way physicians, attorneys, and accountants treat themselves and others regard them you're not going to make those six figures. You have to see this so much more as a, a walk of life, a way of life, almost a calling. And, you know, if you're willing to, you know, button down and grind it out the way these other, you know, three examples of professionals do, you know, like I, I know personally some spine surgeons, uh, they wake up at four o'clock, they work out, they hit the hospital by five, and they basically don't leave between the hospital and the office uh, and surgeries until about 11 or 12 midnight, sometimes 1 a.m. That's their life. And that's why they're making, you know, they're, they're, they're bringing in $700,000 a year is because they work those hours. And very similarly, physical therapists that apply themselves with the same attitude can do it and make those six figures as well. So uh, let's go into the strategies. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is home health. Home health is blowing it up right now in the healthcare world. And uh, if I'm recalling it correctly, uh, you know, there's a Forbes article that says next year, it's going to be basically impossible to staff for physical therapists, particularly in the segment of home health. And for the most part, home health is blowing it up because uh, a lot of payers don't want to pay for expensive hospital stays and expensive skilled nursing stays. And so they're just booting people straight to the home. Uh, and people want to have that same level or attention or access of care just at the home because it's a little bit cheaper without the overhead of the facilities and a lot of the ancillary uh, professionals that come along with facilities. So home health is the first place to go. And I can tell you right now that if you're working in home health and you're not being offered the opportunity to make at least one hundred and four to one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year, or equivalent compensation, um, with or without benefits. I mean, you can just do that as a per diem, really, at the rate without the benefits. Uh, then somebody is underpaying you. Um, I know for a fact that full time uh, oh, physical therapists in my uh, area in Southern California, their equivalency rate is there. It's at the low, you know, hundred thousands. And if you put in those 40 hours or 45 plus hours, you'll make that. You know, I've actually heard of some PTs in home health making 200,000. Uh, and that's because they're grinding it away. They're working 60 hours a week. But if you want to make that, that's a great place to start. And for the most part, there isn't any kind of home health agency that isn't willing to give you those hours so long as you sign certain type of uh, declarations about overtime or change your status as an exempt or non-exempt employee. So that's number one. I'm just uh, checking for comments because I don't want to ignore anybody. And uh, so number one is home health. And the reason this works is 
home health agencies tend to pay by service because that's how they bill, right? They, they bill by, uh, you know, how much they see a patient and that reciprocates to uh, how much uh, they get paid and they can pay you. And so, you know, uh, an average PT could make somewhere between say 120 and $180 for a start of care with an Oasis uh, and so on and so forth under that tier, depending on the uh, intensity of that. So like a PT evaluation or a follow-up treatment or discharge, it, it won't be that much. But that's how you get paid is for service. And so if you're an efficient clinician and you know how to treat and document efficiency and you can drive safely enough between those distances, you can easily put uh, that kind of caseload on and make those six figures. So number two, and uh, I'm just going to reply to anybody that, you know, if you're within your social circles, yes, I think this this is recording. And uh, we should be able to um, put this up later. I'm hoping to put this up on my blog and uh, probably on Updoc Media as well. So number two is location-based uh, job market opportunities, primarily in SNFs as well as um, just some very, very far away facilities from, we'll just call it in the boonies. Um, so an example is uh, in my area, there's actually a facility offering to pay $60 an hour. And I'm pretty sure, um, I'm pretty sure it's a combination of, uh, of outpatient and a work hardening. So, you know, at $60 an hour, you know, if you want to do the math really quickly and you're working absolutely full time, you're making $124,000 uh, in a more or less outpatient type work hardening type uh, situation. Now it's not exactly, you know, located in the heart of San Diego, California. It's pretty far out there. It's a good, you know, 45 hour, 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 15 drive, depending on the traffic. Um, but that opportunity is there if you feel that the trade-off is, you know, is worth it to you. Uh, SNFs are known to pay a lot depending on what their contract is with the, you know, the, the continuing uh, retirement community or just the uh, nursing facility itself. Some SNFs, uh, their rehab program is contracted out. Sometimes it's internal. Sometimes it's an internal vendor, which is kind of like a, an inside out type model, but they can afford to pay quite a bit. Uh, $48 an hour or so is typically the, uh, the mark where most people can crack into six figures. Uh, and 45 would be, in my opinion, kind of the median, if not lower at this point, um, pay grade per hour. Uh, it's not uncommon to see 48, 49, 50, even 55, depending on what your contract is uh, with these facilities. And if you're not getting offered that, that's because they're lowballing and you're, they're waiting for you or hoping that you won't counter. And given the job market coming in 2016 for physical therapists, it's only going to get more competitive. And so these facilities are going to have to find ways of attracting human capital and talent and retaining them. Because otherwise, especially the, uh, you know, the you fresh PTs and, and those in the millennial generations, you're just going to find a better place of work, probably home health. All right. Number three, travel and registry. It's also location based. But it has more to do with the uh, the fact that you're going to be in a certain location temporarily, 10 weeks, 13 weeks, 16 weeks, uh, and it's not always a great place. And it's also, uh, it, it could be in various uh, parts of a state or various states, period. Uh, about 10 years ago, traveling PTs, they were making $90,000 right out of school, you know, and so you adjust for inflation and whatnot, unless these companies aren't uh, doing their job or the majority of them aren't, you should be able to get a rate very similar to that. Plus the sign-on bonus. Usually the sign-on bonus is something like, you know, $10,000, $15,000, depending on how badly they need you. Now, again, you're not going to be able to do this as a revolving door, unless you're willing to go to some of these uh, more remote locations, but you will make that money. And not only will you make that money when you're there, you can also find some time to, to supplement that income if you really want to grind it out and make those six figures. Uh, and, and that is the uh, fourth way of doing things. Say you're happy where you are, you're at, you know, uh, you're part of an outpatient crew, or maybe you are uh, in an acute care hospital, you love the benefits, um, but they're paying you something like 35 or 36 or 38 or $40 an hour. Well, that's when you jump uh, into home health, either before work or after work. Uh, or every other Saturday and get some of those really, really good rates. Or similarly, uh, sign up for a local registry uh, staffing agency company, uh, or sometimes the travel agencies uh, will have that 
uh, availability to, they get that request from a facility or a director somewhere. And uh, what you can do then is work your 40 hours or even drop that down to say 35 hours if your manager is willing and then supplement with more lucrative hours at a skilled nursing facility, at home health or through a staffing agency. And I've known staffing agencies that are willing to pay $60 an hour. You're basically on call for certain parts of the day, but that's wonderful considering, you know, sometimes uh, new grads, they're making, you know, 35 and under. So the final way of doing things uh, is making management. Depending on your system of where your, uh, you know, your a system of employee, you know, if you're at a acute care hospital and making director, you're, you're probably going to make six figures. Um, if you're going to make, say, a supervisor of an outpatient clinic, then maybe not so much. And if you're uh, looking at, say, a director of rehab for a SNF, uh, there's actually a good chance that you can breach six figures. Some of it takes time with, uh, you know, staying at a location and getting the raises you know, every year, or every other year, depending on what the human resource uh, policies and procedures have prescribed. Uh, otherwise, you know, the DORs out there that unless they're in a very, very, very nice location where they can get low ball to, you know, high 80s, low 90s, um, the market average throughout the United States, you should be making at least total compensation of six figures. And it's not too difficult because for, you know, for you young therapists or you're just, you know, ambitious therapists out there, uh, there are plenty of PTs that are director of rehabs that burn out very, very quickly. Um, some locations have chronic burnout, you know, like every year, every other year, they have a new DOR. And that's a great chance for you to jump right in there uh, and get your pay grade raised very, very quickly. And then you can laterally transfer to another facility now with your accumulated experience uh, that you can make that value proposition that I am worth six figures for my time for the value that I add. So that's, uh, that's basically it. So one, two, three, four, five, number one, home health can't go wrong. Bare minimum 40 hours a week. If you're pulling that and you're pulling the uh, unit equivalency for productivity, you are going to be making six figures at home health PT, unless the agency is lowballing you or you're not counter offering, uh, you know, what you want your pay grade to be. Number two, locational based facilities that aren't terribly popular. Could be SNFs that are very far away. Could be a correctional facility, a government related facility. Again, there is a facility in my region, you know, I'm not willing to drive to it, but it's paying $60 an hour and they want to hire right now. So if you're in, you know, the San Diego County area and you want to make $60 an hour as a PT, there, I just tweet me, email me, whatever, let me know. And I'll see what I can do to uh, introduce you to that recruiter. Uh, number three, travel and registry agency PTs. Uh, they have a contract with other places, hospitals, facilities, uh, private practices, whatever. So long as you have that contract, you staff for these businesses, but on a temporary basis. It could be seven weeks, eight, 10, 12, 16 weeks, who knows. Uh, but the pay rate is incredible and the sign-on bonus is, is usually 10,000, give or take. And you can probably argue that up to 20,000 if it's going to be in a very, very uh, remote location. Uh, number four, supplement your income. If you are very happy with where you are, but they're not paying you that well, but you like the security, go ahead and drop down. You don't have to be a full-time equivalent. You can be a, you know, a, a 0.9, a 0.8, 0.75, depending on if they let you or not. Then supplement the rest of it with the former strategies, working at a SNP, working at a home health or travel agency uh, or staffing agency that's local. And finally, make management. Most management, uh, you know, at the PT level, so long as you're not looking at the floor supervisor for outpatient services, you should be in the high 90s, if not more, which means your total compensation is going to make six figures. And quite honestly, the amount of time that they make some of those inpatient DORs uh, put in, uh, they are definitely worth, uh, worth the uh, six figure uh, pay grade. It's just up to them to negotiate with their hiring managers and argue out uh, you know, different aspects of it, which uh, will probably be part of a different blab in the future on uh, how to um, either during the interview process or perhaps after your first or second year uh, review on how you can negotiate a salary bump uh, quite effectively because of how expensive it is to replace that human capital. So uh, that's my blab of the day. 
and uh you know thanks for being with me sorry that there was so much uh there's so many problems early on with the auditory stuff and uh you know i hope uh hope you enjoyed it and i'm hoping to uh figure out how this recording and embedding works so that we can put this up on uh on updoc media as well as uh my personal blog so um i see a bunch of hands i'm not sure what that means <laughs> I hope it doesn't mean that I've ignored you. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's it. Any uh, questions? <laughs> Cinema, you might just have to, uh, you know, you might just have to ask Joe to show up to you personally. <laughs> I don't know. Let me just uh, look throughout, uh, throughout uh, Twitter as well as Facebook just to to see what we have going on. I don't want to miss anybody or miss anything. So just give me a second, type your questions in and I'll answer them as soon as I can. I'm still trying to figure this out. So <laughs> let's see what we got. Um, I guess that's it. All right. I'll, I'll leave it out for another minute or stuff. Questions, concerns, other areas you want to see future blabs on, comments on uh, my lovely background of Star Wars figurines from Disneyland. Hi, Monique. Yes, no, no, yes. Okay. Going once. Questions, concerns, future blab requests. Going twice in my low radio announcer, smooth jazz voice. It's like Katie wants to talk. I hope I did that right. Or not. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll call this successful blab. So I will see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. And uh, we're hoping to put together a blab tomorrow uh, with some UpDoc Media re representatives. So stay tuned.